Hello, bonjour, and welcome everyone joining here in Canada and from around the world. And thank you for participating in our first live session of 2021. My name is Othman Quick. I'm the marketing and communications lead at Prep Doctors here at our headquarters in the Toronto area. If you haven't heard of us, Prep Doctors is the largest private dental training institute in Canada with five centers in Vancouver, Calgary, Mississauga, Toronto, and Montreal. Before we dive into our topic for today, I should say that our discussion will be live, but we'll be answering your questions live as well. So the questions that you've already sent in on social media and the questions that you drop into the comment section of this live post. Now, I am so excited to have with me such an esteemed panel of guests, uh, starting with Simon Bells. Simon is a senior manager in national business development and support in the healthcare division at CIBC. Simon spearheaded the creation of the original ITD banking bundle and the partnership with Windmill Microlending, which has led to the current iteration. Simon has worked extensively in the past few years with dentists uh, training for the equivalency process and is well-versed in all matters related to internationally trained dentists. Simon, are you there? Hello? Hi, how are you? Great, great to see you. Welcome, welcome to the panel, Simon. Wonderful, wonderful. So we also have with us Sydney Coles. Sydney is the manager for key partnerships at Windmill Microlending. Windmill is Canada's largest and most successful microlending program for immigrants and refugees. Sydney has extensive experience working in the field and has been part of the team that has helped many foreign trained professionals succeed in Canada. Hello, Sydney, welcome. Thanks, Utman, and I'm really pleased to be here on this panel with all of you. Great to have you. And last but certainly not least is my colleague at Prep Doctors, Ahmed Youssef. Ahmed is the financial controller at Prep Doctors. He has over a decade of experience in Canadian taxes, accounting and finance. Ahmed also teaches one of our modules in one of our CDE courses here at Prep Doctors. Hello, Ahmed. Welcome back. Hello, Osman, and hello to Simon and Sydney. Excellent, great to have you. So fantastic. Uh, with that, we'll jump right into the discussion with a question for you, Ahmed. Um, before we talk to our guests about the financing options, what are the costs um, and, and expenses that we're looking at when it comes to the dental equivalency process? Okay, so when, when we talk about the cost, uh, there are uh, some elements to take into consideration. The first, of course, is the certification and the exam fees. Um, the NDB exams costs about, um, on average, twelve to fourteen thousand uh, dollars if you if you do them all on the first attempt, including the certification and registration fees and whatnot. And then comes the uh, equipment costs, equipments and tools that you have to, uh, to practice on. And then on, uh, on the ACS exam, you would need that kit. You would, you would need your own kit to sit for the exam. So that kit would cost you about uh, ten to $15,000 with, uh, with, uh, with equipments and, and materials. Um, and then comes the training cost. If you decide to do it alone, then you wouldn't have this cost. But uh, for most uh, most of the of the trainees, this is a must-have. Uh, training cost again for all for all the exams would add another 15k on average to your uh, to your budget. Uh, the last element, of course, is the uh, is the living cost. Uh, to do this on a full-time basis many of the dentists takes about two years to finish the, uh, the equivalency. Um, it's a long journey. And if you, if you can't afford to do it full time and you have, you have to have a job, then it's, it takes even longer. So, um, like the, the average living cost in Canada right now for a single person is, is about 2,500, 
uh, for a family of four, it's about five to six thousands. That must be taken into consideration as well. Right. Um, so when it comes to, to financing the equivalency process itself, what are in general some of the options that the dentists have? Well, if, if we talk about financing in general in Canada, uh, we have the conventional loans. You can walk into any financial institution um, and seek, seek loan approval, um, either banks or even when you, when you walk down the street, you would see those signs of uh, quick approval, no, no credit needed, just, just get a loan. That's a bath. Um, another bath, for, especially for newcomers to Canada, is the immigration loans. They can use immigration loans to settle down and to pay some, some like specific costs related to their, uh, to their education sometimes. Uh, but uh, for, this, for this one in particular, they have to see an immigration uh, consultant, uh, someone to know more about these. But this is certainly something to look at. Because it's uh, it's easier to get for newcomers because it's government it's backed by the by the government of Canada. Uh, when we talk about dentists in particular, there is something called foreign credential recognition loans (FCR) loans. This is also a program backed by the government. That's why it's it's not too hard to get. It's uh, easier than private institutions. Um, and the, the interest rate is somehow reasonable on those. Uh, there are many um, not-for-profit organizations across Canada so, providing these loans. Um, what, they, what they look at in particular is first your uh, immigration status. Um, the FCR loans or conventional loans, immigration loans, they don't deal at most, they don't deal with uh, with I would say foreigners. Uh, you must have a BR in Canada, or uh, you must be a Canadian resident or a conventional refugee. Uh, and if you are a refugee, not every bank would would give you a loan. So, uh, but the FCR loans deals with the refugees, BR, and Canadian uh, Canadian citizens. The other thing is you must have. Uh, finished your education and have international experience um, outside Canada and you, you must be coming to Canada to pursue your career and move on with it. So this is, um, this is a typical dentist, internationally trained dentist case. Mm -hmm. um, these are the conditions. If you fulfill these conditions, you're good to go uh, with some few details and you can get up to $15,000 from any of these organizations. Now, until last year, it was possible to get uh, more than one loan uh, from these organizations. I'm not sure, maybe Sydney can confirm that. I'm not sure if this is still applicable or not. Uh, you would be able to get one from Windmill and then one from uh, TSET or Active and, uh, and so on. Um, now, the, uh, the other option for dentists, which is the booming option now is the CIBC program, which now is CIBC and Windmill, um, which I see as a great, a great partnership. Because um, what we, what, what I used to advise uh, students before or trainees is to start with Windmill or any other uh, organization that provides the the uh, fifteen thousand dollar FCR loan, and then once you get get going, you get your NDEB approval, you start your training then you go to CIBC because that's when they catch up. But so now with this partnership, it's, it's a great initiative and you can just have it all at one, one stop. Excellent. So that's, that's perfectly leads us into uh, our, our discussion about that partnership itself. So maybe Simon, you can jump in and tell us about um, what the, the banking bundle looked like previously and uh, what are the latest kind of updates to that and, and uh, run us through the details? Sure, no worries. Well, well, thank you so much for the opportunity again and uh, to all on the call, congratulations on your journey so far. I know it's, uh, it, can, uh, it can be a challenge. It can be quite challenging sometimes. And what we, what we tried to do is we, we wanted to put a package together so that we could take the financial burdens off your journey 
when it comes to getting your equivalency and getting back to being a dentist here in Canada. So the previous, when we first introduced the program, so CIBC, we're actually the first Canadian bank to recognize internationally trained dentists, um, you know, giving and recognizing their prior education and licensing to actually receive funding from us, just as you would be if you were going to a Canadian university for dentistry. So, so I think that's I think that's huge a huge recognition of the investment that CIBC is putting in to people you know to, to your character, saying you know what you 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 worked so hard for it what can we do so the program as it stood was once you had your NDEB profile in approved status then CIBC would advance funds and we still do this we advance funds along your path along your journey as you pass these exams so. Previously, you would you would come in and say, "Look, I've just got approved with the NDEB. I'm going to enroll in the AFK," uh, and we would advance up to we would advance twenty five thousand dollars to provide financing for that. And then once you pass the the AFK, then we would we would in, uh, increase another ten thousand dollar installment, uh, t- taking a limit to thirty five. And then for the for the ACS, once you pass the ACJ, go to the ACS, we would allocate another fifty thousand dollars. And then fifteen thousand for the OSCE uh, prep courses and things like that. So along the way, you can gain access to up to a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and we've changed it slightly last December with our partnership with Windmill. Um, and so let me bring up the. Uh, I'll share my screen and bring up the uh, slide there. So. The current version of the CIBC program at the end of the day right now is to finance your your journey at the beginning through to passing the AFK, you partner with Windmill directly. And so Windmill will then do the financing application for you in that respect. Uh, And then once you've passed the AFK and you come in, before you even enroll in the ACJ or anything like that, once you have the pass, you come to CIBC, and as long as you've got the qualifying credit uh, scoring, which we'll get into, um, then we would allocate a $35,000 limit to you, and we would pay out the windmill loan and any other, any other, uh, any, any other education-related debt that's already been accrued in that respect. So the $35,000 would absorb your existing, existing uh, debt load and also provides a buffer for the ACJ. Once you pass the ACJ, we increase your limit from 35 up to 85 and allocate $50,000 towards the ACS course. Once you've passed the ACS and you have all three passes under your belt and you go into transfer status to write the OSCEs, we allocate another $15,000 for that prep course. Okay, so and so you can see we, we, we gradually go up to $100,000. But what we do within our program, what we've done is when we designed it, we said to people, surely there's got to be a way to make your life easier. And people said, well, it'd be great if we could pay, if we could get some financing to pay for the tuition and the prep courses and the registration fee, the $9,000 registration fee for ACS even. And so we went, great. But then people said, but I still have to skip class. I can't dedicate myself to my learning because I have to put food on the table for my family because we found that most people in the ITD world were mature age with established families. And, and so if you had a choice of having to pick up a shift or go to work somewhere to pay the bills, then class came secondary. So within our hundred thousand dollars, what we did is we said the hard costs over the entire journey should be around 50 to $55,000. If you went through a prep course, bought your instruments at full retail value, so to speak. And so what we did is we've allocated $45,000. So we're around $3,000 a month over a year and a half to go towards living costs. Because the idea is I want people to be home for dinner with their kids. I want people to have those weekends available to go to the soccer games and and take your life back and not work 40 hours a week at night to, to make ends meet. And, and the idea is to say, please use our money to get through. 
get your license and change the financial prosperity of your of your family for the next several generations. And I, I think that's a great opportunity that people can look at. Absolutely. And in uh, Sydney, coming over to you, um, and, and I know that Windmill doesn't just give people money, there are also other, other areas and ways that you support uh, your, your clients. Tell us a little bit about Windmill's part in, the, in this partnership. Thanks, Usman. Yeah, I think I think there's so many synergies uh, between the work that CIBC is doing for you and the work that Windmill does for you in what is really quite a difficult and long process and an expensive one. Um, and so I think um, I loved the way that Simon spoke about wanting to ease that journey because that's exactly also um, what what we are trying to accomplish at Windmill as well. And I think um, one of the ways that Windmill does that is it partners you with a career success coach who is looking at, you know, clearly once you've, once you've come to reach uh, Windmill within this program, you already are on your journey, you already know what you want. But, you know, just to quickly say as an aside, for lots of other people who aren't as clear, we, we do try to help people figure out how to align their objectives with their prior experience and professional development and, and sort of where they're headed. But in your case, it's very clear where you're headed and we're just trying to help you along the journey. And I like also that we have this uh, mutual idea of um, uh, making the way easier by providing finance for the underpinnings of your of your journey, which is also, you know, living expenses. And what the other thing that um, Windmill realized that is, you know, for, for caregivers and situations, look, there are a lot of parents at home right now trying to study for exams, trying to make their way through a lot of things, and they've got kids at home, or they might have elderly parents as well, or a relative that it requires care. And one of the things that Windmill is really, um, interested in doing is providing some um, some financial coverage for the cost of that care. So we, like Simon, are looking at um, looking at uh, at our clients as whole people with whole lives, not just people on a journey to become dentists, but people who have in the fulsomeness of what is happening for them and the challenges that arise on a daily basis. How do we help you address those so that you can move forward? So that our loan is covering things like living expenses, um, like caregiving expenses, like um, if you need, it, you feel like your English language skills aren't up to par and you need, or you're looking at those exams and you're thinking, I don't feel like I have the English language skills um, sort of polished enough to address even the exam content. Can I get some um, financing to help me do that at the same time? And absolutely, yes. So I would say we, we really are, there's a lot of synergy in that way as well. I hope I answered that question. So, yeah. so let's dive deeper in and, uh, and start talking about specifics when it comes to um, the loan conversation. Um, what are the factors um, that loan officials are looking for when considering applications? Um, are there any key factors? Maybe Simon, you can jump on this first and then we'll get Ahmed and Sydney to, to join in. Sure, so okay, so from CIBC's end, there's three basic requirements. You need to have the PR status in approved. So the PR has to be issued, so we don't actually, we can't support those who are still on non-resident uh, status or a refugee status, for example. So you need to have the permanent residency issued. You also need to have established Canadian credit, and we have a minimum credit score, credit score requirement of 650, okay? The other part is that you need to have your uh, NDEB profile in approved status. So if it's still in progress or process, uh, you know, we're, we're waiting for the NDEB to do their back checking and validation of your prior credentials. So they're the three key areas. So now for those who have just arrived and you, if you don't have sufficient credit scoring, um, then we would always, re we, we historically referred to windmill anyhow in that respect. Um, but for those who have arrived and don't have established credit score or are still in temporary status in limbo, what we do recommend is that you sit down with one of our team members, and I have 120 specialized advisors across Canada, which we can get the list through to, uh, to Usman and prep doctors to share. But don't just walk into any CIBC because this is a specialized program. 120 people that are specifically trained to support you in this journey through your equivalency process when you get your license as an associate and continuing forward. So we can sit down and we can establish our 
a new arrival credit card for $500, for example. And so that way, by the time you've passed the AFK, um, you've got established credit and we can sit down and we can help you with that counsel on how to manage the credit to build the credit scoring to be able to qualify. I love Windmill's partnership with the mentoring program. You know, they're introducing you to someone who has walked, literally walked in your shoes and gone through the journey. And I'm, I know many of them would have loved to have had this option available to them when they went through it. So, but three key criteria. And the idea is you don't need to enroll in the uh, ACJ, for example. You walk in, you say, I've passed the AFK. You don't have to enroll in the ACJ to get our funds. We're not reimbursing you for future exams. We're actually providing funding upfront so that you can go and pay for the registration for the ACS and things like that. And of course, if you're already in your, on your journey and you've done the first two exams, there's nothing stopping you walking in and coming to us and saying, hey, I've got, I've got the AFK and ACJ under my belt. And we can go straight into an application for $85,000. Okay, and, uh, and, go from there. and and just for people who are who are very new, um, just just give us a brief explanation of how Canadian credit scores work. Ah, well, Canadian credit scores. So this, I tell you, when I first got here from Australia, um, the 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 requirement and the emphasis on the credit score in Canada for almost everything was astounding. So, a credit score. I mean, it's. It's, your, it's, it's the scoring mechanism on the likelihood that you would default on a debt. So it would be more than 90 days behind uh, or even file bankruptcy within a, two, within a two year period. So it's a combination that it, you know, it, it takes into account how long you've had credit, how, how, often you, how often you're behind. It really, if you're late on payments or you miss a phone, a, a phone bill, it can really have an impact on you. And the credit score, it's not just important to maintain a good credit scoring for banking, but when you do car insurance, house insurance, they pull a credit score. If you get a phone, if you get a new phone account, when I first got here, I got a plan through Bell, but I, had, I couldn't make any international calls back to my family in Australia for a year. They had a restriction on it. When I, when I bought a house and had a mortgage and I wanted a hydro bill, I had to put a $200 deposit down because I didn't have sufficient credit in Canada. So it, it, it impacts you more above and beyond just getting a credit card in the line of credit and mortgages and things like that. So our team and micro and windmill sit down and really can help you counsel you through to how to improve it, how to repair it, how to get one. Right. Okay. So, so Sydney, tell us about how um, windmills criteria would differ from CIBC and and what does the application process look like on, on your guys' end? I, I wouldn't say that the criteria are all that much different, quite frankly. I think what is maybe different and distinguishable between us and a, and a, a formal banking institution is that credit rating that you're talking about. Um, because for us, we acknowledge and we know that people don't come with a credit rating um, uh, built in. So what we're trying to do is actually help you build that credit rating so that you can go back and have some of those <clears throat> eligibility factors lifted because you've created a credit rating with Windmill before going back to CIBC and before going to, um, you know, your, your hydro company or your phone company, you've got that credit rating to show to them so that, you know, they'll, they'll see you as a, a right and good um, uh, client. So that's one thing in terms of your immigration status, it's a same. You need to be a permanent resident of Canada. You need to be a convention or protected persons recognized um, refugee. Uh, typically, we ask that you that you apply for a windmill loan within three, if you're a refugee, within three years of landing in Canada. Um, and also that, you know, with us, uh, there is no interest um, going to be paid if you come to windmill as a refugee. You, there is no uh, there is no interest um, charged on our loans. Through the, through the sort of generosity of private and public donors that we don't ask refugees to pay interest at all. Um, but in terms of eligibility, they're much the same. Okay. Um, what are some of the mistakes or, or um, you know, pitfalls, the areas that people should be focusing on when doing these applications? And maybe we'll start with you again, Simon. Oh, sorry. I, the one question I didn't answer, you asked about the process. The application um, is pretty simple. 
Um, first of all, you go online, there's a very quick app eligibility survey, which is five questions long. Once you go from that, you move right into the application process. It typically takes about three to five business days to approve your application. And within that, um, from that time of approval, about 10 days to get money right into your account. So it's a pretty quick process. And I just wanted to say that before you moved on to Simon. Absolutely, thank you. Okay. Simon? Oh, excellent. excellent, so great uh, great questions. Um, uh, so things to, to consider. So your question was, you know, what are, what are, some, of the, what are the, some of the things that the common mistakes that people make? And I think nobody likes to owe money. And I, and I, th I think one of the common mistakes that people utilize, that people, people make on this program is when financing is available, that the financing is used as a last resort and all other avenues and resources are depleted first. The idea of what I wanted to design with this program was so that you did not have to deplete everything and start from scratch again. So one of the common mistakes is that we still see many people who have taken our financing package not actually touch it yet because they continue to work in a, in a, in a full-time or a part-time capacity. And the idea was to allow yourself the freedom and flexibility not to do that if you, if you did not need to still subsidize you know, your household expenses above and beyond what we were providing in financing. Um, when it comes to credit scoring, I see a lot of one of the biggest one of the biggest mistakes and oversights people have is being late on a credit card being just once you're one day over that 30 day 30 day cycle. So if you've missed your payment date on a credit card and you're more than 30 days late, it impacts your credit score and it stays there for seven years, even if you catch up. If you have a dispute with a phone company and you say, I'm not going to pay your bill, get here's your phone back. If you still owe them money or even a gym membership, if you don't pay them, they will report on your credit bureau and it will have a detrimental impact for seven, up to seven years until it's actually resolved. So the advice is if you have a financial dispute with a partner, unfortunately, in the best interest for your credit scoring, you need to pay it and then sort out the resolution of getting the refunds and things like that. CRA changed the rules. If you had a dispute with them, you used to be able to defer how much you owed until it was resolved. Now you've got to pay them up front and ask for it back later. And, and I think a lot of people make that mistake protecting their credit score, but also depleting their resources above the first before they actually asked for help. Right. Uh, and Ahmed as well, um, what, are, what, are you, what are some of the mistakes or the yeah, well, I, uh, uh, when it comes to credit, uh, credit scoring and credit history, uh, I think this is what newcomers in general should take really seriously when they come to Canada. It's a new country, a new system. Um, for some of us, we've never seen something like this. Like the, the similar thing that I would think of is... Um, when, when we go to university, if you mess up on a, a single course on your first semester and you get a D, it takes you uh, four years just to eliminate the effect of that D on your overall uh, transcript. Uh, same thing with the credit scoring. If you do a mistake on your first uh, year in Canada, uh, even though it's a minor mistake, you just forgot to pay the $50, $50 renewal fee on your credit card. And it keeps reporting as late payment, late payment. It goes on with you. I've seen wealthy people, really wealthy, getting denied on loans just because their credit score is not good enough. So this is something we have to we have to take really seriously. Um, my advice to people is if you're not so tech savvy and so organized, then don't apply to everything you see on the street. Don't apply to every credit card you see on the street. They, they come with really nice offers, shopping bags, gift cards, whatever. If you know you can manage it, go for it. But if you're not sure, just don't do it, at least not on your first, second, third year in Canada. Let it go, let it um, build up your credit history and then you can move on. I, I just wanted to point out too that um, one of the things that Windmill does offer is, and I know that um, the FCR program does as well, but this is sort of more personalized, I think, is financial literacy 
um, training through Windmill. So when you come to us, the things that Ahmed is describing to you, we will go through again and, and sort of put um, the Canadian credit system, sort of the, uh, the concept of credit in Canada into perspective. We help um, folks devise um, a home budget. What does it mean to budget? What does it mean to create a budget for your household within the context of Canadian set cost of living? Um, and how to integrate your budget that includes your repayment um, uh, options. And I think that's really important because we're all working not to put people at further financial risk. Simon is, Ahmed is doing it, and we are doing it. We are not here to put you at greater financial risk than, than it feels like you already are putting yourselves at. And it's, it's actually really important to us. And it's not to say that because we, you don't need to have a credit rating or a co-signer or, or proof of, um, of uh, an asset that you're going to get approved because Windmill will actually not approve you if, it, if they feel like taking on an additional loan would put you at greater financial risk. And so I just wanna point out that all of us here are, are really have your best financial interests at heart. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I just wanna start moving into some questions that we've uh, received during the past week. And, and one of the big questions is, at Prep Doctors, we get a lot of um, inquiries and questions from people who are not yet in Canada um, and are looking to come um, you know, in the near future and uh, pursue the dental equivalency process and eventually start practicing in Canada. Um, so as somebody who hasn't arrived yet, are they able to start up any type of loan processes or anything like that? Is, is there anything available? For someone like that, I'll uh, direct that to you, Ahmed. Uh, at the moment, uh, unfortunately, not. Uh, like people in Canada without a proper status cannot apply to these loans. So, uh, if you're not not yet in Canada, uh, no, you cannot apply. I'm not sure if there's a way to initiate uh, contact to initiate any application. Uh, maybe Sydney can comment on that uh, on that their side. I, I think that's true for us as well. I think um, what you what you can do is try to familiarize yourself as much as you can with the credit landscape or who you think you know, uh, knowing that we're here, knowing that Simon's here, knowing that CIBC is here. Um, trying to formulate a plan for yourself and maybe put some dates to that plan. But in terms of what you can do with respect to applying, uh, no, we are not able to uh, accept an application if you're not actually in Canada. Okay. Um, many, many of our, our trainees, um, especially given the fact that, you know, these are already uh, dentists uh, who have graduated in other countries. Many, many of them come here um, married or, or uh, you know, in relationships. How does the, the partner's financial status or income affect um, the, the loan application? Uh, maybe I'll direct that to you, Simon. Sure, so at the end of the day, uh, when, we, when we do an application for someone, for, for an ITD, we would normally do it just in their name alone. And so we would not generally, we wouldn't tie any of the spouse or other family members to the facility at all. It would just be in an individual name. Um, we may ask for spousal income or details. If, if someone has, like you know, we saw a situation where, where uh, we were providing $3,000 a month towards living costs to, to subsidize living, uh, but the client already had a mortgage and the payment was $7,000 a month. They were in Vancouver. And so we said, well, look, can you provide us some additional household information to show us how you're going to continue to pay this if you're going to quit your job and do the class full time? So, you know, we, we do dive into it sometimes, but on ge in general, I would say 99% of the deals, we don't, we don't need to worry about that. We just need, we, we want to see qualifying credit scoring, permanent residency and, and, and exam statuses and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And another question for you, Simon, um, I believe this is from Facebook from Dr. Akash. Can we top up our loans during the equivalency process? Um, if you maybe just want to go through how, you know, the top, topping up process. Sure. Again. So, so what we do is we pre-approve you at the beginning for $100,000. And so once you've passed the AFK, we say, right, here's your limit for 35. Once you've passed the uh, ACJ, and remembering 
our program is designed to go through the program in a linear fashion. So you, you can't en enroll in the ACJ and the ACS at the same time and ask for $85,000. You have to, we, ha we have to go from the AFK to the ACJ, past that ACS and so on. Um, because I mean, I know Ender does allow you to do them in alternative or, or at, the, at the same time. From our end, it's, it's a linear progression, but we say, right, we're gonna increase the limit from 35. Then we're gonna increase it to 85. We're gonna top it up to hundred at that point. If you need financing above and beyond what those allocations are, before you have moved on to the next program, then we would direct you back to Windmill, for example, or an alternative lending partner. Uh, our program limits in that respect are, are, are firm uh, and we don't have any leeway to, to go over above and beyond the 100,000 uh, until such a time that a license has actually been issued. Okay. And, uh, and another one for you, Simon. Um, this comes from Dr. Morrell and they're asking, um, what about interest? What are the interest rates? Um, sure. The program? Yeah, absolutely. So the interest rate on the line of credit is prime plus one. So CIBC Bank Prime, which is 2.45 plus 1%. So you're looking at 3.45% per annum. So that's an annual yearly rate. That's not a monthly rate. Now, the interest on the line of credit, the beautiful thing about a line of credit is it's a check account with a big, cheap overdraft. So you only pay interest on the money as you use it. So every month, every day, the, the balance will be calculated at the daily rate of 3.45% divided by 365 effectively. It's calculated at the daily rate and every 30 days, we will charge the monthly interest. Okay, so it can be, as, as the balance grows naturally, the interest cost is gonna grow. I believe the windmill loan rate is prime plus one, RBC prime plus one, which would be a prime plus one and a half, I believe. So it comes out to 3.95. So there's a half a percent differential. And I know some people often ask, what is the difference between the line of credit and getting a loan? And a loan, say for example, windmill loan is, here's a lump sum of money in your account. You're going to start making the monthly payments that have a forced principal reduction over X time period. So the loan will be gone by a certain time frame. The line of credit, it's revolving, come and go. So you can take it out, you can pay it off, you can come back and get it again. And you only have to pay the interest cost. Any, any principal repayment to pay down the balance is completely optional. And it gives people that flexibility to really utilize it, their cash flow uh, to, to what their household needs. Excellent. Thank you, Simon. A uh, question for you, Ahmed, from Rabia Bashir. Um, and they ask, uh, what do we need to know about uh, financing uh, for ACS? Um, do you have a rough estimate and, and from experience of previous trainees, uh, what does the financial impact of ACS look like? Well, ACS is the biggest, uh, biggest part of, of the NDP process financially. Uh, to sit for the ACS exam, uh, the, the fees is about $9,000, just an exam fee. Uh, you have to add, add to that another uh, about 10,000 to buy the equipments that you need to set for that exam. Um, and then comes the training. This is a practical exam. So you do need training and you do need supervision on, on your work. That's, uh, that's the biggest uh, junk. And uh, it's uh, like we're talking easily, we're talking about um, $30,000 maybe uh, of that journey. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's why uh, CIBC's uh, program provides the biggest chunk of money for the, for the ACS. That's right, yeah. So $50,000 effectively to allocate hard costs plus living costs. Okay, excellent. Um, I guess the elephant in the room that we haven't really talked about is uh, the global pandemic that we're currently uh, going through, hopefully on the tail end of. But, in, in, and I guess there's a question for the whole, for the whole panel. Um, how do you think COVID-19 has affected, um, you know, the, your clients, people who are coming into your office? And, and as a future outlook, um, how do you think uh, COVID will uh, will impact, you know, these 
these financial options, but also the, the journeys for, uh, for our dentists. And uh, anyone can jump in first. Um, I'll just jump in to say that, uh, you know, we, 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 we do have offices across the country. We have offices in Montreal. We have an office in Calgary. We have an office in Toronto. But the, the, the great news is that we are a national lending organization. So no matter where you land in Canada, you can come to Windmill regardless of if you land in Halifax, if you land in Moncton, if you land in, in uh, Quebec City or in BC. It doesn't matter where you are, uh, uh, where we're going to be there for you. Um, I think for us, the big change is that uh, obviously immigration and, and, and refugee numbers have been substantially curtailed and lowered because of the circumstances. Um, so that's really a, a, you know, just one more additional challenge for so many people. Um, and that we feel, you know, really, really strongly about that it's just so tough. Um, but in terms of how we operate, I think the, our, our capacity, what we've done on our end is to boost the way that all our processes are functioning within the different divisions at our organization, the application process, the approvals process, um, and the different ways that we're delivering that service to our clients has we've done so much our research and development actually in the last year to try and improve those processes internally so that we can respond to people online far better than we ever have so just know that we're responding to these challenges so that we can help you better and faster absolutely simon any uh, uh or i mean, go ahead sure. yeah sorry uh, i was gonna say um like in, uh, in pandemics and uh, situations like this, uh, we see the effect of initiatives like Windmill and other not-for-profit organizations because you don't see them cutting back on, uh, on financing to people, on helping uh, people out. Um, so th it's, it, really makes, it really makes a big difference. What I've seen um, since the start of the pandemic is that in, in general, private institutions have cut back a lot, restricted access to, uh, to financing. And that's obvious because it's a, it's a private institution. At the end of the day, they want their money back. And during pandemic, they know a lot of people may default on money. And, uh, and I was really surprised to see that CIBC went ahead with their program. They haven't even restricted the uh, or tightened the criteria it went on as usual, which is really, which is really, really great. Mm -hmm. Simon? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's just uh, as Armin said, we, uh, I mean, we, we've obviously, we've, um, you know, we, we've morphed the program slightly, introduced a windmill into the factor, into the factor, but I think the benefits that windmill brings for someone at the early stages far outweigh what our team of advisors were able to deliver with the mentoring and the partnership and things like that. But from our end, um, uh, we haven't slowed down. So we haven't restricted, we haven't changed any parameters. Um, you know, so if you've got a husband and a wife couple that are both going through the program, yes, they're both eligible to apply for each of the 100,000. We're not looking at that. We've even, we've even introduced a program for mortgages for internationally trained dentists who have been in Canada for less than five years. If you've got 35% down, we will we'll actually help you with a mortgage application as if you did have your license already. So we'll actually just assume you're making $200,000 as a dentist to qualify for, for, for that mortgage, which is why it's always important to have that conversation of, I've got all of this money here. Do I deplete it first or can I use it to buy a house, set my family up, and then I can use the bank's line of credit to get me through the program. So, you know, from our end, I think, I think we've, we've looked at the pandemic and realized you know, what, what, are, what is actually impacting people and, in the ITD world, people still need to go to class. They still need to pay their exam fees. They still need to write things. And so we it's been business as usual from our end. That's that's fantastic. That's that's brilliant. Um, I've got another question from Facebook, and I, I think you just answered this, but I want to be really clear about it, Simon. Uh, Dr. Soham asked, can both a husband and wife get a $100,000 loan, or is it only for one of the spouses? So if each person had qualifying credit scoring and were in the uh, approved status, then yes, we would do it for each. And we have done that many times because we, we find many, many households are married, are married dentists going through the program. And this way, 
one person, instead of one person working full time while the other goes through, both people can go through at the same time. And uh, the same question for you, Sydney. Um, um, yeah, two people in the same household can be going through um, the process. I think, you know, where where when we're looking at um, household finances, if both people are going through, you are not judged. There's no judgment against that in terms of what your capacity is to repay. I think we we consider each person individually within a household, and also just to say, because going back to that one question about household income. We do look at that amount. So even though one person may be going through for a loan, we do consider household income, but not exclusively. And we wouldn't exclude someone's application or deny it based on um, the fact that your spouse also is at work and, and is earning an income. Um, obviously, that we're not going to hold that against you. It's just we do look at a household income in terms of the big picture for you. Absolutely. OK, another question for you, Sydney. Um, this is from Dr. Luana, who asked, um, can getting the loan with windmill or a line of credit from CIBC prevent me from having a mortgage to get a house in the meantime? So question for both windmill and CIBC. Hmm. Wow, I can't speak to, because we don't offer lending for mortgages, I can't speak to how that would impact a, a mortgage application. What I do know and what I might imagine, and Simon can speak to, to this as well, is that you know um, maybe not simultaneously, but if it, if you're if you know you've taken out a loan with Windmill and you've got a year of repayment under your belt, it, you might be looking to a CIBC bank as a client who who is making their payments and in terms of that uh, loan application approval. But I I can't speak to that, so maybe actually Simon might have been the better person <laughs> to field that one. Um, sure. So in short. Any, any debt that you have that has a monthly payment or a monthly obligation will always have an impact on your uh, capacity and affordability when, when applying for a mortgage. So uh, in short, the answer is yes. Um, how much does that have an impact on? Depends on how much you owe and who you're applying with. So, uh, you know, Windmill, if you did a $15,000 loan and it's paid off over five years, um, you know, you, you're... Uh, you, you're going to have about a $300 minimum payment thereabouts, you know, uh, to, to, that's going to allocate and, and take money away from being able to buy a mortgage. If you have the line of credit, so the way the credit bureau reports is if you have the line of credit and the limit is lower than $50,000, then your bank will allocate a 3% of that, of that limit, of that balance, basically, towards your payment. Um, with CABC, because we recognize it's a student facility, we'll actually allocate uh, only a mortgage payment. So if you owed $100,000 with us, some banks may allocate $3,000 a month that you are, that, is, that is now unaffordable and goes off it. From our end, we allocate around $494. So you know, it, it, it depends who you go through, but it, yes, it does have an impact. And the more you owe, uh, the, the, the greater the impact it has. And even once you become licensed, if you say, look, I can get a line of credit for 350 personally unsecured, that limit for 350 will eat into your capacity to get a mortgage down the road. Even if you don't need it and don't use it, it will, it, it will have an impact. Yeah, which, which kind of answers the next question, which comes from Dr. Sumit who asked, um, if I take this fund, how will it affect my credit score? And does it depend on the money I withdraw um, from the given line of credit or is it counted based upon the fund itself that's provided? So the line of credit, it, because we report it as a student line of credit, the okay. utilization percentage doesn't impact your credit scoring. What will impact your credit scoring is forgetting to pay the interest each month, which is why we normally sit down and and by default, we have it sweep from a CIBC account because within the line of credit, we don't just do the line of credit. You know, we have we, we give you free banking for four years as, as a dental student instead of one year as a as a new a new arrival. Um, you know, we, we we've got the mortgage program. We can sit down. We can provide counsel if there's if there's qualifying household income. We can provide credit cards with travel points and lounge pass accesses for when you do have to travel. Uh, to, to attend exams and other prep courses. So we do more than just this line of credit. We provide an entire relationship from now all the way through to retirement at the end of the day. So 
I, I think it, it's good to sit down and just have that conversation of what what's what's my need and what's going to be the impact. Absolutely. Can, um, can I just? The, oh, sorry. Yeah, I just want to quickly jump in to say quickly, quickly that I think one of the other things that that I really value about Windmill um, as an organization is that they will take you through our lending program as an individual with your own client success coach who cares deeply about your outcomes. And I think you will feel that that is a very personal relationship that you can enjoy throughout the, the time that you hold alone with us. And I think it's really important when, when things are confusing and things are hard and it, it, there are a lot of challenges on your journey that you feel held and accompanied by someone who cares about you through the entire process. And, and I'm really proud that Windmill does that and will do that for you. So another quick question for you, uh, Sydney. This comes from Dr. Abhishek. Uh, so what are the interest rates for the windmill loan? I think you're on mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no um, so we are looking at uh, Prime plus, uh, now Simon described it as 3.9, but I don't think we're sitting as high as that. I think we're uh, sitting at... 3.5 so so i think it was prime plus one and a half and uh, so okay prime, so if the prime is currently 2.45 and so oh, okay half would take 395 there we go yeah okay thank you <laughs> we fluctuate as well because it's a fluctuating rate so yeah that was from uh, daniel's presentation with windmill on another program yeah on, okay on yep yeah. thanks <laughs> that's your question answered by science Thank you. Uh, so a question, another one from Facebook, Dr. Arine uh, asks, what's the difference between a loan and a line of credit? Uh, Ahmed, maybe you wanna tackle that one really quickly? Yeah, uh, as Simon, Simon had mentioned earlier, uh, uh, when you get a $10,000 loan, they give you the 10,000 and they start to incur interest on that $10,000, no matter if uh, the 10,000 is like 9,000 is still sitting in your account or you've spent it all. Uh, the line of credit is, uh, is the other way around. They approve you for $10,000. If you need a thousand, you take out 1,000 and they charge you interest on that $1,000 only. But the other funds are still available for you whenever you need them. So you have the uh, ability of kind of uh, uh, withdraw payback withdraw payback whenever you have excess funds just pay it back and save some interest on it that's the beauty of a line of credit so it's it's always uh better to go for line of credit if we're comparing apple to apple in terms of interest rates mm -hmm. okay this is this is an important question for you uh simon uh dr nagar asked um when we approach CIBC for a line of credit uh, application, if we get approval status from the NDEB and are waiting to register for the AFK, can we apply? Um, if yes, how much will be the limit? And, and just to, to, to piggyback on that, there's a lot of people who are now kind of in limbo um, because of the backlogs created by the pandemic and, and you know, with, uh, with you know, a lot of people in the process, how does those kind of people who are, you know, waiting for applications or waiting for to be accepted into exams, how are they affected? Sure. Um, so, so anyone who's in that approval status, um, absolutely. You know, we, we welcome everyone to reach out to us at the beginning. From the financing perspective, until you've got a pass in the AFK exam, any financing resources would have to be diverted through and gone through and, and done through Windmill. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't establish that relationship at the beginning and get you free the free account and the you know and sit down and talk about the plan and the journey um, to you know to to partner with you on that one. So if, I, if you've got the approval status and are waiting to do the AFK, you'd still have to go to Windmill. If you've passed the if you've passed the AFK and you're waiting to enroll because uh, you know the, the the numbers are capped, uh, that does not prevent you from coming over and getting that thirty five thousand dollar initial start with us. Uh, and the same with the with any of the other programs. If you've passed other exams and you want to you want to continue on, but you're you're in limbo, then you can we can still we can still look at the financing aspect of that, as long as you've got that pass in the AFK. Okay. 
Um, and then that kind of really leads into the next question from Facebook from Dr. Samir. Uh, and they ask, windmill versus CIBC, what are the key differences? And I think we've talked about that throughout the discussion today, but if you could just maybe run us through a quick summary of what the differences are between uh, the two. Well, I think windmill, as we've said, is it's there for the initial uh, financing portion, but I think it, it provides that introduction to the system, the mentoring, the partnership, the credit coach that you have at the beginning of navigating the Canadian banking and the financial system while you deal with everything else. I know, you know, I, when I got here 14 years ago, I spent the first year banging my head against the wall going, what the heck did I do leaving Australia to come over here? Because it was just frustrating adapting. And, and that, that was just coming in the banking world. I can't imagine having studied for so many years as a dentist and to have that position in, in, in society and then to pick up and move and change and and, and, and have a lot of that taken away, it, it, uh, you know, it, it's difficult to adjust. And I think Windmill provides such a great partnership in that, in that aspect. And we can come in once you've got through and, and established and, and, and help you along the rest of the journey at the end of the day. So I think they are the two key differences uh, in, in that respect. But I think it's a, part, I think it's a partnership that, that can really provide tremendous benefit to people. Okay. Um, if I could just bring it back to Ahmed, and, and uh, if we could just touch on a little bit about the COVID uh, aid that we had from the government, um, you know, and the available programs and, and, and what, you know, what is out there uh, besides what we were, we're talking about today? Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, worth mentioning that uh, uh, the, throughout the pandemic, the, a lot of people have benefited from the CERB, CESB, the student benefit, uh, the recovery benefits. Um, unfortunately, those were paid out to people without deducting any taxes. So many people will get the hit now when it's time for tax filing. Now, the, the good thing for uh, students who have taken courses with PRIP doctors is that we provide a tuition tax receipt. Um, it gives you a 15% tax cut, federal tax cut, on uh, if you owe any taxes. So if you have any income and then the CERB or the CESB comes on top of it, you will definitely owe some taxes. Make sure to get your tuition tax receipt. All what you have to do is to, to provide your SIN number. We've already uh, collected uh, most of them, but if you did not provide your SIN number, please make sure to provide it and make sure to collect your receipt for 2020, 2019, 2018, whatever it is. If you're not sure, please contact us. Uh, the, the other thing I just wanna mention as well is that uh, if you have done your certifications, you're now a Canadian certified dentist. There are other programs uh, from various financial institutions that can help you out to start your career. Uh, pre-approvals, really nice programs. They can also touch base, uh, talk to us. Uh, if you are an ex-student of prep doctors, you don't have to be a student right now to talk to us. Just call us, um, ask anything, and we would refer you to, uh, to the suitable uh, place. Excellent, thank you for that, Ahmed. Um, and I guess we'll just get to a final question from Facebook from Dr. Sara, and they ask, when do we start paying off and how long is the repayment period? So I guess I'll get an answer from Simon and Sydney on that. Sure. So, so Sydney, uh, with the uh, windmill loan, what's, what's the normal uh, repayment period? Yeah, so de it depends on how much you're taking out. I'm going to presume that most and many of you will, ma will probably max out because for us, our max is $15,000. There is a smaller option of up to $7,000 where the repayment schedule is usually between, I think it's two to three years, two, th three years max. But with the $15,000 maximum, we're looking at between, usually it's four years, but with um, sort of circumstances and extenuating uh, and the duration of your program, it's, it's four to five years for the, for the maximum 15. Excellent. And then from our end, I mean, with the line of credit, once you've hit that hundred thousand uh, limit, um, when you get your license, so 
normally within the first two years of you getting of receiving your dental license, what we do is we convert that from a student line of credit to a professional personal line of credit. The interest rate drops from, pri from prime plus one to prime minus a quarter. And you retain the interest only financial financing position, the limit of monthly payment. You keep the, you can, we can actually increase the limit uh, on, a, on a regular basis as well. But by, by maintaining it as an interest only line of credit, it's yours for the rest of your life. So your choice to, of repayment can be, can be suited and you sit down with an accounting professional and work out how quickly can I pay this off in the most tax effective way. But you could, you could owe, us, owe us the money for 50 years if you wanted to. You could take five years to pay it off. You could, you could pay it off in three months if you had the resources. So once again, I wanted to design something that provided individuals with the flexibility to, to have control over their financial financial prosperity. And so and that's that's what it is. So if you want to start paying us off from day one or even while you're in the program, naturally the more you pay off, the less interest it costs you. You know, for every ten thousand dollars that you owe, it's gonna cost you about twenty eight, twenty nine dollars a month to maintain. So you want to make sure that's in your budget. But yeah, I, I wanted something that if you don't want to pay us off for the next 30, 40 years, you don't have to. Absolutely. So um, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. I want to thank my wonderful panel of guests, uh, Simon Bells. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my, my pleasure. Thank you so much for the invitation, the opportunity. Um, I just wish everyone well. And it's such an exciting, it's so exciting to be part of the journey and, and, and know that we can impact so many different lives in such a positive way. And Sydney Coles as well, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for inviting us to this conversation. And again, good luck to each and every one of you. And uh, we'll be here if you need us. Thank you. And finally, Ahmed Youssef, thank you so much for joining us as well. Thank you, Uthman. It was glad uh, being on with you, Simon and Sydney. And uh, likewise, we're always available. If you have any question, just contact us and we would be more than happy to connect you with all the resources available. We'll also be tabulating and putting together all the information that you heard today in a blog format so that you can read through that. And also we'll be giving links out to CIBC and Windmill so you can contact your uh, local representatives and get more information and start your application processes with uh, those specific programs. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, take care and stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.